Jeff Burton, thank you so much for joining us on your show. Hey, Adam. How are you? We had the chance to take in a number of questions from our viewers. Our first one comes from Melanie in Westminster. She says, there are numerous NASCAR fans here in Colorado in the Rocky Mountain region who'd love to have a NASCAR Sprint Cup track here. Um, she's wondering if the drivers are in favor of that or if the altitude poses too many difficult challenges for that to be possible. Uh, no, I don't, think it, I don't think it imposes too many difficult challenges. I think that our sport would be very well served to be in the, to be in the Midwest and, and to get out to Colorado and that area. I mean, there's no question about it. We have a lot of NASCAR fans. Uh, we really don't have any tracks uh, that, the, that the Cup Series runs on in that area. And there, for our sport to continue to grow, those are the type of areas that we need to move into. And next question comes from Jeffrey, and I'm sure it's one you've gotten a lot in the course of your career. He says it's his premise that the skill level of the drivers is very close at the cup level and that it's the technical prowess of the crew chief, the engineers, and the like is what gives the drivers an edge. And he said he has friends who argue the opposite and would just like to know your opinion on the topic. Well, that's an age-old question. And, and uh, you know, is it the car or the driver? And what I can tell you is that it's both. Uh, the teams that are running the best, they have both things going on. You can't take a great team and a poor driver and have great results. You can't take a great driver and a poor team and have great results. You have to have both. And, and what's interesting is, much like an NFL quarterback, you know, a driver can look very, very good in one situation and, and turn him around and put him in another situation and look very bad. It's all about putting the right group of people together. And uh, really, our sport comes down to people and mixing the right group. That's uh, that's imperative to having success. And NASCAR, obviously, one of the the biggest drawing sports these days. Brian from Highlands Ranch writes, and obviously, there's still un non-believers, if you will. And he wants to know, what do you say to the non-fans who say that this is just a bunch of cars running around in circles? Well, you know, hey, listen. To some people, that's what it is. You know, we're not going to. Our sport, nor any sport, is going to attract every single fan, and not everyone is going to watch our sport and be excited about it, uh, the same with football or baseball. But honestly, if you watch our sport uh, and, you, and, and, you, and you understand what's going on, I think you have, you'll have a great appreciation for it. The thing that I see is that once people come to a race and they get that excitement, it's hard for it to go away. And uh, that's, uh, that's what I've seen, is there's a lot of excitement around the sport uh, a lot of young people around the sport today, uh, you know. And again, we don't, we can't be everything to everybody, but we certainly uh, we certainly believe that most people that watch it, uh, they come back and watch it again. Nori from Broomfield wants to know what rules don't you like about NASCAR, and what rules do you like, and why? Well, one of the things that, that NASCAR does that's very frustrating for the teams, but but ultimately it's the right thing to do for the sport, is that you know. I, I, the way our deal works is we don't have driver's unions. We don't have car owner unions. Uh, we are free, free enterprising, self-sustaining companies that, uh, unlike baseball and football, they have, they have franchises. We don't have that. So we have to earn our way in every single week. We have to earn our way in every single year. Uh, we are guaranteed almost nothing. So that's very, very difficult. The positive of that, though, is that it keeps all the teams in, in order. It keeps them working hard to be competitive. Uh, we don't have situations like we saw with the Florida Marlins years ago where they invest a lot of money, uh, won a World Series, and, and then just dumped everybody and got rid of everybody. Uh, we don't have that situation in our sport. So, um, but that, that means that checks and balances that sometimes it's tough to deal with, but, but it, is, it is in the best interest of our sport to have that competitiveness. I want to segue you to a, a personal question that came in from Janine and Ogallala. Nebraska, whose grandson has muscular dystrophy, and she'd like to know if you plan to use the Muscular Dystrophy Association as a sponsor on your cars like you did when you were driving for Jack Roush in the past. She said it meant a lot to her family to see that happen. We, we have worked, my wife and I have worked uh, very, very diligently with, with muscular dystrophy. My wife's part of the, uh, and I included, but my wife does most of the work, part of a, a big muscular dystrophy drive here in Charlotte. Uh, we, We've raised a tremendous amount of money over the years. Uh, when we had MDA on our race car, uh, our, our then sponsor was very involved with Muscular Dystrophy Association, and that, involved, that, that sponsorship came through them. So uh, I'm, the driver doesn't determine the sponsor, but we work very hard with MD, uh, trying to cure MD, and uh, we've spent a tremendous amount of time with, with MDA. You know, if you watch any of the newscasts, that, and pretty much anywhere in the country, I would imagine Samuel writes in, an interesting question about gas prices. And he wants to know is the price of the racing gas increasing the same way that consumer gasoline is rising in price? 
the, the price of fuel is up without a doubt. Um, there's no there's no question. The, the price of fuel is way up, and uh, we at, we at race teams are feeling the crunch just like everybody else. You know, we travel uh, thousands and thousands of miles with transporters and airplanes and and uh, running race cars, and of course all the testing that we do with race engines. So our uh, our fuel price is up as well. Back to the actual racing now. Myron Bosch writes and wanting to know when you drive. Do you end up ever getting tunnel vision lap after lap? No. You, 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 a lot of people have asked me, you know, do you get dizzy right, going around in circles? Do you, you know, uh, let me tell you something. There's so much going on, and there's, every lap is completely different than the lap before. You never just get in, get in there where you can just, you know, do the same thing you did the lap before. Every, things are always changing. There's always excitement, always something going on. So uh, it, it's uh, pretty hard to get tunnel vision. All right, here come a couple of questions about your team now. Helena writes in, any ideas who's going to be the fourth driver over at RCR next year? I have some ideas, but I can't share those publicly. She even wrote, so I'll bet you, even if you know, you can't say yet. <laughs> it would be in my best interest not to. Kevin Kuima writes in and wants to know, what's it really like to work with Kevin Harvick? Kevin, Kevin has been an incredible teammate. Uh, Kevin has been very supportive of, of what we've been trying to do at RCR. Um, he, he has been one of the best teammates I've had, and, and that's saying a lot because I've worked with people like Mark Martin and Matt Kenseth, and, and uh, Kevin, has, Kevin has been an incredible teammate, uh, extremely supportive. Ext you know, he, he has been, you know, I, I have two of the best teammates in, in the business. Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick are, uh, are very, very good to work with. We all help each other a lot, and it's been a, uh, it's been a lot of fun to work with both of them. We had an opportunity to pose this question to Kyle Petty, and it's such a good one. We wanted to ask it to you, too. Mark Rosnick asked, if you could switch with any driver, who would it be and why? <laughs> well, I'm happy with my car. I, uh, you know, my team and my, and my organization, I'm, I'm really happy with, you know, I, there's, there's, um, there's different personalities. My personality is such that I'm pretty sure there's people that are better than me, and so I just work real hard to, to make that up. Uh, you know, I think some of the most talented drivers we have, you know, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, uh, you know, Kyle Busch, Clint Boy, those guys are just so talented. So uh, I'd like to, uh, I'm, I'm always interested in judging myself, engaging myself, and I'd love to, to just see, you know, to really be able to compare myself to like a Tony Stewart. And if I could have his talent for a few days, just to see if it is, how much better it is, you know, that would be really interesting to me. Final question for you, Jeff, from Martha Martinez, who says she's in a fantasy NASCAR league. She wants to know if you're going to win this weekend at Daytona. <laughs> Man, if, if I knew that, I'd go to Vegas. But uh, I, uh, you never know what's going to happen, especially this weekend, the Coke Zero 400. Man, it, you know, race at Daytona, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, I'm certainly not going to tell you uh, who I think the favorite is, because I don't think there is a favorite. I don't think you can you can go to a restricted plate race and pick a favorite. It, it's so wide open. But, um, I have to tell you, I, I like what we've been doing with our, with our play program, and I feel like we're having a lot of time.